All right, we're getting started with the Hollow Man Torchbearer here. Really cool model, a lot of character, nice uh, spiky top to impale yourself while you're playing games, reaching for models. Um, as always, I'm going to start blocking in my colors, getting things where I think they need to be. Um, we're going for the, the Minoth scheme with this guy, so we're going to have those nice cream-colored armors and the uh, rich burgundy cloaks. He's also got a lot of wrappings and stuff, so we're going to use a, a hemp color, probably kick it back a little bit uh, in mixture. Black and brown for our base on the gold, and I'm going to try using uh, moldy ochre for our gold mix this time, just to desaturate a little bit since this guy is a little bit weathered, a little more dirty, or he will be when he's done. Right now he's pretty uh, pristine. Um, so I'm going to start by blocking in just with my black and brown where everything that I'm going to have that's gold is going to be gold on the model. Pretty quick step, just getting the areas that I believe need to be gold blocked in. You got the faceplate of the helmet here, staff, these armor pieces, the coral type texture that we have there. Just one little piece on the lamp, lantern, and then nothing on the black. Um, the, the markings, these symbols are going to be black on top of the purple. Next step, taking the Minoth white base. I'm going to apply that to all the flat armor areas. Again, just a base coat, nothing special. What your first coat should look like, fairly splotchy. Um, it is a yellowy white, so it's not going to cover very well. I think the helmet was the first thing that I hit, so I'll come in and show you what a second coverage you should expect. The trick is not to overwork it and go back and like go brush, 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 brush again. After you've put on a coat, you're just going to push paint around. Uh, better to just do one coat, except that it's going to take another one, and then move on. That's second coat with that color. So you can see that it's it's going to take a few coats. This doesn't take very long to put it on though, so be patient. Uh, it's going to be thicker in these thinner areas because I can kind of gob it on without worrying about brush strokes overlapping. Um, so that's just a little bit of a cheat. Uh, but in here, not worried about hitting the uh, cross too much. I'm going to end up painting that after I paint all the fades in the armor anyway. Uh, but I am going to leave a little bit of black showing for it. Uh, I'm just not worried about overages at uh, the current step. All right, we got our Minoth white base in. Still seeing a little bit of darkness through here, but I'm going to add some shadows, so I'm not super concerned about that currently. Just want to make sure that my high points are nice and bright and solid. Now we're moving on to the burgundy, which I'm going to mix up. It is magenta, red oxide, and violet, and then bringing up the value with white. Let me see here on my palette. Uh, I have these spread out. It's a little bit of purple and about equal parts red oxide and the magenta. That gives you your nice base. Now, again, going for a little bit more of an undead sort of look. So, starting a little bit on the darker side with my oxide. Looks like I got some dry pieces of pigment on my palette. Just need to knock those out. Yeah. Good solid base coat of all of our cloth areas, except for this skirt back in here. I'm sorry, I've been gone all weekend. I haven't been used to filming, so now I'm kind of missing things. Painting off camera. Again, getting that, that red oxide kind of showing through a little bit more, dulling out that burgundy, but we're going to bring it up in the high, high highlights. We got all our burgundy in. It's tinted like a little bit toward the oxide side, but that's fine. Still need to knock in some shadows. Um, for our wraps, I'm going to start with a base of hemp and then add some of the Pro Curl Coal Black and some of our chimera purple just to tin it so let me adjust so you can see the color this is the color right here that we're going for so purple black hemp black to keep it a little bit desaturated and darken it and purple to 
again work with that saturation also give us some shadow with color hemp is kind of the color that I want to move toward so in that sense I'm going to use it as the base for my mixture so that when I get to my highlight which is going to be more important in this sense I'll have a pure form of that color so hitting all the wraps all the way up the staff here the pokey staff not for Pokemon for poking people And again, just moving with base coats, getting our color scheme knocked in. Got all our straps base coated now. Uh, we're looking at the color for the shirt and here in the, the body area. So I, I still want to use the hemp, but I want to yellow it up a little bit. So I'm going to take some pale yellow just to give it that straw color. I had to take a little bit of a break so my paints are drier on the palette. But I'm going to take my hemp here, mix it with this kind of straw yellow. I still want it kind of brown, desaturated. And then let's do a little bit of purple, a little bit of black, just to bring it down. There we go. And that'll be our shadow color for the more straw areas of the cloth. That's one of the things you got to get used to in painting is mixing. You got to be able to make your own colors because you have the best ability to get what you want when you can just make it. So that's going in here along this uh, skirt edge. A little bit darker of a color. It's coating pretty well even though it's got some yellow in it. It's pretty watery from the black. The black was sitting on the palette for a while. But just to differentiate these two materials here. One's going to be a little more yellow. One's going to be a little browner. Up in here. And then he has like a little shoulder area up here. It's like the shirt doesn't have the wraps on it. So we're going to do that in that color. We'll get this base coated and then we'll start looking at highlighting. So coating over this base coat of our yellowy gray, yellowy hemp. I'm gonna take some of this Army Painter Speed Paint. <clears throat> I know, Speed Paint's hardened leather. It's got a nice color, it's pretty rich. We're gonna see what it does. I know Gasp, using a Speed Paint on a studio model. Ooh, I like that. Very textured element here. Trying to work fast and accurate and on film. So this will be the new base shadow color since we are working down. Not too concerned about getting paint on other objects right now because we are in the thick of it trying to get paint on these interior areas. So I'm going to speed up and keep working. This shirt area, fairly simple. We're going in and we're taking our sort of gray yellow color here, mixing it with our shade. What is this stuff called? This is the, uh, the army painter, speed paint, um, the leather color. <laughs> and um, using that to highlight to bring up a little bit so adding in more of that base and then as we go adding more yellow to this and mixing it in with our color for our shadow we're taking the the speed paint again and we are here i have it here the speed paint we're adding black and purple to it for our shadow area so the areas that are away from the light so back in here we got a lot darker um, still a little bit shiny from the, the speed paint, but up there you can see a little bit of the gradient here. And then shoulder area, just to demonstrate our highlight. Rinse out my previous color. 
mix it up in here and then add just some little top highlights which might get shifted to purple later on but for now we're going it's got a little bit of purple in it I'm just highlighting those I think the staff was in the way the entire time we do that sorry that's how I can see it uh, this little shirt area getting some highlights there uh, now I think let's move on to highlighting this tabard for highlighting our tabard we took the base color of our burgundy and add a little bit of white to it be careful of the amount of purple that becomes visible because that purple is a very strong pigment and then we're just tracing the topography of the cloak here with a little bit of light in mind light coming from up here the lantern so it'll be brighter toward the top and around the edges. All right, so we've gone in and highlighted this tabard. Two steps of white added to my mahogany and then purple to my base color for the shadow area. So back in here where we're not receiving a lot of light, we added that purple to it and then drop shadow here and then right here under the giant blingy belt buckle that he's wearing. Uh, I'm going to continue the same thing on this side. I might hit this whole area here with a deep shadow. All right, I went ahead and um, added in some more shadow. You can see we got a little bit deeper tone on this side. Sort of as a guideline of where I want my highlights to be. Um, and then back in here, it's actually the same color. It's just not a light. Not a lot of light that can get in there and illuminate that color. Now I'm going to drop some more of this purpley shadow tone over in here where we're away from the light and then under the hood here just darkening it up giving it a little bit more drama drama lama and hitting some of the creases here it's got some breaks and then anywhere there's an overlap, I'll make sure that that object is fully finished before moving on. Alright, with the same colors, we've continued to highlight, push contrast, add shadow here, here, and then glazing back down. So taking our, uh, our mid-tone color, watering it down a good bit. You can see it's pretty watered down here, glazing back over it. I'm to the point where the paint... Um, this paint in particular, the Chimera, is a little bit chalky, so I'm going to take some of the Vallejos. I got the um, Warlord Purple Hex Lichen, and I need to find a, um, a blood red that'll work good for the uh, mid-tone, probably the scarlet red here, just to tone down the, uh, the magenta a little bit from the Warlord Purple. Smoother consistency, um, less pigment in the paint, a little bit easier to control. Go back and hit all these areas. I'll show you how I did that. I forgot to film my weathering down here. So that is the black and brown, a half step of black and brown, and um, it's over here in the corner. Black and brown and our, this was the, nope, it was this one over here. It's just separated a lot. This was our, uh, our hemp. So hemp and then pure hemp so to brighten it up at the bottom just to show kind of the the wear and tear and the color and the staining of the uh, the garment probably going to add a little bit of that up here because we have some texture from the 3d print so i want to turn that into weathering whether it's uh holes that are in here or just maybe little clods of mud that are stuck to his back um, so going in we're going to push that forward and I'm going to film some of that for you. And just to show you guys an example of the glazing that I'm talking about. So I've mixed up this color which is a little bit brighter in value than our other ones but still in that burgundy tone. I've glazed a small area here already but using a combination of brush lick here but you can see this half I've gone in and glazed so I'm adding back some saturation and doing some blending at the same time by glazing this area but real 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 light with it so it pushes it more into that burgundy tone and same up here so we're going to start blending these highlights out a little bit 
and he has a purple light, a purple lantern, so I'm trying to keep that in mind for my light source as I move up. And again, blending that area out, and then on his hood here, that's, you know, it should be purple because that purple light, but it's still being kind of cautious, making sure that we're representing the tone of the faction, while at the same time giving it a little bit more interest. You see how it, it pushed this and blended this area a little bit, getting rid of some of that chalkiness that we had. And then I'll be going back and adding white to this color and shifting it down with the red and um, and the purple for our highlights. So this is an overall sort of shift this color over here on the side of the head. You know, like you would apply a wash, but there's not much paint on your brush. So the difference is the is the brush load, but the brush stroke is the same. Or overall, making sure you're working wet. And if you go over a dry area, make sure you just kind of cut that line. And there we go. So I'm going to continue to, to work that up, but shifting that color. And you see this highlight hasn't been glazed yet, so there's a slight difference here. Plus the, uh, the blend is a little bit rougher. So smoothing out and working on these transitions again working up adding more of our red our scarlet red to our mix a little bit of purple when we get to the final highlight um, maybe not final highlight might want to go a little bit brighter but again smoothing 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 glazing layers going back washing in um, these highlights just to chill out those hard transitions a little bit so adding lots of water to our paint and unloading our brush and then if I want to smooth this out and go in and do some glazing layers over just the transition area of these highlights and then maybe some in here just a little bit to darken this up a little bit more still going back and forth on whether I want the light to hit on here because it's got some interesting shapes uh, on this side of the hood and then going back and adding some dirt. So taking our hemp color, mixing it with our black and brown, and doing some, some little dirt clods that have been getting caught in the rain, sort of drizzling and dripping down his back here. Really dirty dude. Uh, trying to mimic that same thing kind of down here and then bringing the weathering up a little bit more so taking sort of the mid-tone of the black and brown and the hemp thinning it out because you want to work thin especially over something you've already developed as a color and then pulling it from here back into the tails of the cloak and see how each brush stroke barely barely interacts with the surface. It's also maintaining our light and shadow by keeping it thin. And we're going to add some more of these little dirt clods here and there just to balance out the whole back of the cloak. Maybe put a few. I, I started putting a little bit at the base here like he's got some dirt building up on his uh, um, on his neck area where that cloak meets and then over on this side add some add some interest with a little bit of that, that dirtiness. All right, we're starting to build up our wrappings now. So I've taken my base color and added more of our hemp to it. If you remember, our base color was the hemp black and purple to mix down to this sort of desaturated gray, tan, purple color. Um, and just adding a little bit of a highlight, a step up, that we were going to work up, eventually working all the way up to tan but only closer to our light source for this figure and then going back and eventually glazing it back to the purple tone so all these little wraps making sure that I'm hitting the the top edge here making sure that I can get you guys some light here while I'm painting reinforcing I've already done 
most of this leg. Just go in and add another coat. So you can see how it shifts sort of back to that purple, or not purple, but hemp color and away from the purple. The purple is just being kind of left in the shadows. But sort of our unifying color for a lot of the, uh, the body areas, that slight undertone of purple. And then probably having to dirty these up a little bit, add some staining, just like the uh, the cloak. Might add some dirt to the bottom of the tabard here, seeing if it gets like a little bit too confusing or too busy with stuff. Making things look purposeful. But my steps are going to be adding progressive mixes of this tan. See, this base color is dry here. So I'm mixing on top of it, and it will reactivate a little bit of that base color, but as long as I can see on my palette that it's stepping up, I'm fine with that. But pulling my brush strokes toward me, sort of feathering these wrappings out some. And then where I see fit, changing it up some. Now these areas might actually be pretty dark just because of light source, but they're higher up. I still want them to be seen up here behind the uh, the lantern. I'm going to add some difference. So the difference would be that I want to push my shadows down so I can go back with a, a contrast or a wash and pick up all these details that are in here and then blend my my layers together even more in doing so all right, we're going to work on that and i'll kind of i'll start filming again when we get to the wash all right i've added a progressive highlight up to the base uh, hemp here so a little bit darker down in here meaning that i did not highlight as much um, and then much brighter all the way along the staff little section here where light can get through and then on the top of the arm leaving the bottom in our kind of pallid gray same thing here outside the leg catching more light but not a whole lot because that lantern is very shadowed from that angle and now we're going to try an experiment which we might have to uh, redo the gravelord gray hive dweller purple and pallid bones i'm going to mix these um i know it's Against the rules to mix so uh, the pallid bone to keep us more in the um, what do we call it neutral tan zone and the gravelord gray to desaturate our purple and darken it up but adding the purple so that we're not fully desaturated and then I'm gonna test a small area and see what we get it's probably gonna darken it up a decent bit but oh well not too much it warmed it up a little bit but it's also hitting our shadows pretty good and adding that detail back that's there in the natural sculpt so an experimental win i think with this color i don't need that teal to reactivate and get into my color here but treating it like a wash contraster basically a thick wash they still flow into the cracks they just have a heavier pigment and a little bit heavier body so that they tone surfaces a little more now you might ask why I didn't do a wash and that's because I wanted to try out new paints I think a wash would have done the same thing. I might have needed to use more coats for a wash. More coats just mean more control overall because I get to add in second and third coats where I want them to be. And with this, I'm just doing kind of a broad overcoat. Not worried about hitting that cream color right there on the helmet. That's why we're doing these straps first just so we can uh, go and paint over stuff and some clever person put some buckles right here 
hidden in the straps. It's like, why are there little squares there? Did I miss print supports? No. The buckles for the um, bracer that he's wearing. Which I guess makes sense, but I have to do some more non-metallics in that area. I'm going to hit the whole staff, too. I mean, you can see with the staff, there's even more texture on the, uh, the wrappings because of the brush stroke that I used. And that brush stroke being the one where you pull the brush toward yourself. Not worried about the fingers in this sense. Need to mix up some more of my color here. Make sure it's evenly distributed throughout my brush. And work quickly. I don't want any lines or double coverages or a dark area because I ended up coating something that wasn't wet. You want to work wet with your contrast and your washes. Just getting them in there. And that's adding that, that much needed shadow because even though I thought I was pretty dark, it seemed I still was pretty high on the value scale for, my, for the base color of my straps. I wanted to knock some shadow down in there. I'm taking a close look while well, you guys take a close look. And then I can work back up with the hemp on top of this. And you can, again, you can mix contrasts with your uh, hemp, but I'm going to let that dry. I got some good shadow here on this leg. I'm probably going to just leave this leg this way since this is a pretty dark side of the model and only focus on highlights as I work my way up. So maybe down here, keep it, and then start graduating the uh, the brightness by only highlighting certain areas as we go. So cool. Alright, we've worked our color all the way back up to the base hemp. As you can see over here, doing a lot of lining. So lining the top edge and then doing jagged lines for the bottom edge. Um, just a little highlight right here and then just some edges to pick up the shapes. On that side, this side you can see is much brighter. Picking up the top of the calf here, top of the foot, letting it fade into more shadow but still picking out the edges here. Um, same thing up here, really broad highlight there and on the inside there on the straps and then here the whole thing has been highlighted and then leaving shadow on the back but again adding shape and texture with brush stroke here now we're going to start adding some white to our hemp probably do one layer of this i have an idea to use the um the airbrush i'm going to white this out hit it with a purple contrast and hit it with white again and see how we uh how we do as far as our, our bloom because there's going to be some purple light shining on him and his arm and hitting the gold down here but we need to finish everything before we do our OSL or I like to finish everything before I do OSL um, so you can see that the the brightness of this is drastically increased so be very sparing you don't need to be super aggressive with bright bright highlights they go a long way you can see the difference of what this looks like down here and then up here. So we're going to do that. We're going to go brighter toward the top. Especially like the inside of this. Because it's going to be catching a lot of light. And it might just get airbrushed over. Anyway. Depending on how accurate I am with my airbrush today. So just another step in adding our whites it's weird like the angle of this like would the light hit there probably not but sort of rule of cool when it comes to these things sometimes there'd be a lot of ambient light but there would be a cast shadow even the artwork has a cast shadow coming from the bottom of the uh, bottom of the lantern because the lantern has this big stand so you can see like even with the light coming in you see this harsh shadow coming down we'll probably keep that 
do an Eric cast shadow or start to practice him a little bit. Mr. Swinson. I'm going to use this white as sort of a guideline for where that would hit. I won't do a cast shadow, I'll do a cast color. Time to work on our armor. Our shadow color is going to be our thornwood green. Um, for that, I'm going very solid and marking out where I want my shadows to be. So you can see here I've gone in and layered over my my five layers of uh, men off white to get where my shadows are going to be. And then I'll go up uh, or go back and then mix blends progressively to, to smooth out these transitions because that is a extremely harsh transition. Um, but this helps me see where my shadows are going to be. So I have a shadow at the top of this crest here. I'm going to put the shadow for the back side over here. And this paint coats about middle of the road. So I'm putting it on thick. Not worrying about... It coats smooth even though you put it on thick, so I'm not super worried about putting it on thick. I just want to get it opaque. And there you can kind of see an example of it bleeding through. Not worried about my, my gold layout. I know where they are. I'm just blocking those in. I have to go back and do another coat on that one. Uh, but going the kind of the route of opposites here. So highlighting from the bottom up. So I'll have a break here. So I'll go over my black. Just create a line. So like shadow to light, break, shadow to light, instead of consolidating it to the point in the middle. And then here my shadow will start underneath my uh, cloak and come in from both sides. Which is kind of natural for the shadow in this sense. And the same here on the top. And then down under here. And then we'll we'll blend in here in a minute. And the, on the helmet, I'm gonna go big block here. Of shadow, and another one over here. And have sort of a bounce light on the back side of the helmet on this side. I have an example here of how we're gonna fade the armor. So you can see the bands if you look close. They have been glazed slightly. To blend them just at this viewpoint uh, but to do that I have progressive mixes move my palette up right here with the Minoth base tone and the thornwood green so moving all the way to the pure Minoth and then doing a, a glaze over here with it and then taking a mix of 50-50 the Minoth highlight and Minoth and moving up toward the top of our shoulder pad and then just dots of the pure Minoth highlight up here where it gets close to the uh, symbol and then pulling a small inner edge highlight on each side just to define the shape of the shoulder a little bit more. So just to demonstrate what that looks like as it's going on. Kind of deceptive how quickly these colors uh, step up and step down. So kind of dragging along that connecting line between the base color of the shadow and the minoth, and progressively mixing up, trusting the mixes on my palette that they're going to be the same value scale indifference toward each other. You can see it's already blending out, which is also still hard to do on camera. Um, there we got much blendier instead of this hard line um, area and I'll go back and I'll take a little bit of my 
my mint off highlight, add some water to my brush, bring it over here. See, I still got some shadow in there, so I need to do even more of a rinse out. And as with all glazes, glazes, unload my brush, and then come in here and just pull toward my highlight. Do a couple passes and pull from my shadow to my highlight just to blend that area out a little bit more. Um, but we'll still work on that and then we'll push all of our armor panels up to a highlight. Changing pass on the gold, I did a, a test run with the moldy ochre. The moldy ochre is way too close to the, um, what you call it, Minoff white base. So the uh, moldy ochre is here and there's the uh, Minoff white. So when you add white and bring it up, it kind of washes out. So this is the mold, moldy ochre here. You can see a little bit of yellow. So switch back to my uh, old tried and true, the Skullfirst Brown, um, and that added way more yellow. This is the Skullfirst Brown here as compared to the, the moldy ochre. We still have the base of the uh, black and brown, so not going with as red of a base, um, more of a washed out, and then we're gonna weather it as well. So we'll go in and we'll We'll vertigree it up, possibly. I'm gonna um, and add some chips and things like that to give more interest. Uh, chips and that to the armor too. Um, so here is the the backside of the helmet. We got our little bounce light in here, but still really in shadow. And then this side over here catching more light um, and fading all our armor panels down. So we're gonna our gold's gonna follow that as well. Um, but we have a lot of gold to work on. The recipe um, is just layering up. So layer up our skull first brown and then we mix white into it um, and so our whites over here and it's usually just two steps depends on how large the area is so like if you have a rivet or something here maybe four coats till you get to your white and then here um, you know a gradient I think I count one two three probably four five until we get to our pure yellow so six and then seven eight uh, layers or mixes and seven and eight being the the bright end and the white so we're going to go in and again following this armor pattern of color highlight our gold in the same manner and figure out what we're going to do with these coral patterns probably kind of keep the lighting pattern down in here have the reflection uh, again moving away from the light like the lights hitting it and it's bleeding down the surface um, but we'll get there. Just an update, gold is finished. I'll walk you through my thought process on some of these areas. So we have our cylindrical highlight for these guys, a couple of ground reflections in some of the rings, less light in the back because it's darker. Um, same here, catching a lot of light, a couple of reflections in the gold and running through, keeping it interesting with some of these uh, little spot and ring reflections that are happening. I'm keeping the bottom side a little bit darker with smaller spot highlights. Um, the belt, big focal point, kind of central, um, making it interesting. Get that nice reflective dividing line because it does have a crease in the middle. Collecting light a little bit more here, here, and then on the, the back side here. Shoulder pad, very difficult areas because of all the rivets. Trying to make sure that we have smooth blends in between each rivet as it builds toward the bottom edge where the highlight flows with the white armor. Um, same here on the edge with our coral pattern and then on the back side just a little bit darker with our gold not reflecting as much light um, and then just a little bit of edge highlights here and rivet highlights keep things interesting see the edges a little bit better here on this bottom side. Back here on the back side of the helmet a little bit again ground reflection seeing the detail, um, face, again, focus and emphasis on making this view cross much more visible uh, for the uh, aesthetic purposes. And then we started here, you saw that earlier. I got to the gold. We're gonna address the skin now. Um, the skin is uh, directed as having no warmth. Um, so probably going with a bluer base with um, brown 
and I probably won't throw a flesh tone in there. We'll stay with the tans, um, so get kind of a bluey tan. I realize that this is probably skin, so the fingers, the belly, uh, other fingers, shoulder looks like it has that same texture. So we're going to go ahead and shift that to our more blue, and then the face going to have some pretty extreme highlights just to outline because you can't see his uh, his little whoop face going on in there. So. I'm going to get those colors out and then start with the base coat. Skin tone. All right, figure it out. So, the skin tone here, here, desaturated blue. So, we used uh, Reaper Ultramarine, Reaper Khaki. Um, pretty heavy mix of the khaki, a little bit of the blue, and then desaturated it further with some black. So, a very mid to low or high mid um value blue gray um then for a wash because it's a very textured area uh mix of nun oil with the griff charger gray the reason you use nun oil instead of like one of the other black contrasts black contrast is fairly pigment heavy i want to thin the pigment down but also blacken it out a little bit keep it desaturated gotta keep it desaturated Is that Offspring? I'm trying to remember. So you can see how the, or kind of see, that's a really dark area, how the wash slash contrast getting in there and adding some, some interest across the fingers might be easier to see here. But we will add white to our mix here not here because we'll get too blue but here to bring the color up for our highlights and this is pretty subtle but it is adding that texture that I want and let's get his is very happy emotion showing face coated up here I don't want his skin I guess to be fairly light and dried up paper you can do a couple coats of this if you want darker areas let it dry all the way so you don't get streaky spin him around all right looks to be all the skins now this belly is browning out a little bit we might have a little bit of that reactivation going on it's okay it's gonna be weathered um, I've got to go back and do that after we paint everything. Uh, so while this is all drying, I'm going to start on the non-metallics on the spear. Uh, for that, black, blue, white. Then we're going to add some yellow at the end. I'll get like a little bit of sun yellow here, just in the metal for the for the highlights. Um, I have my highlight marked out here on the. Staff, so I'm gonna add some blue to my black, grab some white, get my base blue gray going here. Let me go a little bit darker back in this area of the palette, and then pretty broad for the first highlight. Again, I'm gonna work toward a center point, I'm not gonna knock out my, my first highlight, I'm gonna just go up to it until I get to that color. a little bit farther away because that other side I did a little bit farther. Not going to worry about the back quite yet. Just going to work on these two areas first. I tend to get, if I work on everything all at once, 
I get a little lost at where I'm at. And it gets frustrating. So kind of work on a few areas so I'm letting paint dry. But also getting stuff done. And just step things up. Go a little bit brighter here. Add some white. You can see a little bit of difference there on camera. And then pull in where my highlight area is. And this is a cylinder, so we go up and down. You can use the, the side of the brush like an edge highlight. Or you can take your brush strokes and pull them toward. You can mix it up like I'm doing here. As long as you're really close to your previous color with your layers, things will blend pretty naturally. I don't like how that line's uneven. I'm OCD, so I'm going to come back and reinforce the, the straightness. Reinforcing straightness is okay in uh, painting. Leave it out of the other aspects in your life. You don't need to reinforce it. Sorry, not getting political. Just a commentary. Make sure nobody's sneaking up behind me. Got the door open. Been listening to music and working fast, and now I'm just jabbering to myself, painting figures. I have no idea how long this video is right now. It'll be so long that five people will watch it. <laughs> Continuing this process until we get up to a fairly bright section, and then adding yellow. I'll come back when uh, I get to that point. All right, once you're to the point, and I've done a little example here, where your value is close to 20% from white, um, mix up another parent pool, desaturate it to that color, use that parent pool to mix with your yellow, and then add white, because when you mix this with the yellow, your value will drop from this consistency a few steps, so you need to brighten it back up and a little bit over, or at least in the same range and then you put that inside your previous layer. So we got our little hourglass shape here, which we might take those highlights and leave in the middle and just put them on each side. So then take your white, mix up one more time. Pull an even smaller line. It's right on top or in the center of. So you have a little bit of that parent color coming through. And now I like to H my highlights. So I add a little bounce reflection from the edges down here. Same thing down here. We've got the little triangles at the bottom. And the top. Do a kind of like a feeder line. Show that the light's moving in to this hourglass shape. And then we gotta catch these edges. Faux show. That one got a little bit fat, so let's go back. Gotta rinse. This is why I like having my colors on my palette. I can go back, reload, and be like, oh, I know where that was. And I can make that line just a little bit thinner. And then I like to go all the way to light, white. I like that dot. I like that dot. Pulling a line here might be fun. Get 
Whoop, don't wobble on me. Yeah, going straight down the center there. Maybe reinforce it from the top like the lights are dripping down. H it out a little bit. There we go. Metal with a little bit of sun, a reflection from gold. Important part is the bright points are warm. We're going to go address all these shapes up here. Fun, fun. Let's go back to the skin before my paint dries out on me. The colors that I had. So getting this blue-gray, adding a little bit of white to it, and just adding natural highlights. So fingers here. Just less and less as we roll around the hand. The thumb would be catching the most light here. And looking at this uh, belly area. being real precise. At least I don't have any eyes to paint with this guy. Bright side, right? All models are now Hollow Man models. Get big black eye sockets. Staying a little textured with my brush strokes, if you can't tell. I got some light here on the shoulder. Just rolling it down the edge there. Trying to avoid stuff. I don't know if you guys saw me hit the hood there, but I just wiped it off and I was done. The thing with paints that are dry, and then you can come back with paints that you just added. They're not really cured. Just hit them with a little bit of water and use your finger to rub off the uh, mistake. Trying to hit his bottom lip with having to remix all this burgundy color up. Accentuating the face. We've gone in and sketched in our highlights for the metallics here. Haven't really addressed the back too much, just a little bit with the top of the spikes. And then the uh, I've blocked in some minute dark grays here to show where I want my highlights to be. But now we're going to hit this area with an airbrush white and then come back with our purple that has like a little bit of magenta in it. I'm not going to airbrush that on film because that is going to be really hard to hit, so can't have it under the camera. All right, it worked. Can breathe again. Um, got my white in. Still have a little bit of my value, my sketch in, so that gives me a, a range of where I need to put my light. Got it in here on the back, too, so I got that nice little bit of illumination. illumination. Um, we're going to take Warlord Purple and then a little bit of Violet Ink. We put it in the airbrush, thinned it down, so now we have our warm purple. Feel a little bit more comfortable with this on screen because of the pre-light. I'm just gonna tone it in there. Now I'll go back and add a stronger light once I have this fairly solidified. Definitely want to finish up with some brush work. Readjust objects. Now like this is going to be dark so this little uh, lantern shade. Uh, but these things around it you know, like these two cross beams and then this bottom piece that would be getting that more intense magenta purple light I can use a little bit here on the the straps and go back and darken these up just a little bit. Maybe not because you know it looks good and 
I always like to go back to what Eric said. It's like physics and shit. Go with what looks good. So now I have to mix this color on my palette and do a few layers with my white just to bring up the light source brighter than the objects around it. But we're getting that nice glow and we're going to put a little bit reflecting in the golden on the hood but that'll be done with really thin glazes. Small step, we've gone in and highlighted up the purple in the middle so I took some magenta chimera and violet chimera mixed up color, added white to it and then stepped it up all the way to white to get that center light going on both sides. Just pick a direction that will be your viewpoint so whatever you think is going to be closer to the viewer and images that's where your brightest point will be for light. Now you know it can look like a little bit awkward but still looks good in, you know, in space. Uh, if you're going to plinth something then make sure that the flat point of the plinth is just lined up with where this light is uh, coming out of the lantern that way that that viewpoint when people are looking at it, it's like oh look that's where the light's coming from so now we're going to go back in um, add some more yellow tones back to this gold black this back out and highlight it up because it's not getting any sort of light and then tone down some of the overages leaving a little bit just to show that those areas are illuminated for that going back to our non-metallic base <clears throat> and I'll come in and line the hard shadow so with this up here line these shadows in do a brush lick and then sort of blend them out toning it back and then taking our little bit lighter gray here which is dry It's cold and the heat's been running and all the moisture is gone in the studio. It sucks. It's the only reason I don't like winter as much. There we go, we got that. Because that wouldn't be getting much direct light. I'm trying to look like from the bottom here, like what what would be hitting in these areas. You know, we can get like take a little bit of our our brown to just pull the purple out some of these strap areas just glaze over it to pull it out leave these edges you can come in and take whoop, a little bit of darkness in my brush take these little guys you don't want to go all the way up to the brightness of your light source but in these areas here you're going to be catching some of that that harder ambient light and the covers these little bars that run across things like this keeping just keeping tabs on what is catching that light and what is completely shadowed from it I'm working fast and I got a little dot on my white there fast and under camera uh, that's what we're gonna be doing all right, we've gone in, we've done a bunch of work in a short amount of time. Uh, reinforcing shadows here with our brown and tans. Uh, same thing up top. Uh, anything that's not getting direct light or what you think would be direct light. Bringing it back more to its natural color. Leaving a little bit of ambient glow just for the area. We've brightened up the hood using our magenta tones so these are glazing to leave a little bit of that burgundy in there so you can see it's not as uh, rich of a color it's just more illuminated with that color um, same down here these are glazing layers so really thin gone in and watered it down a lot and then maybe add a few little spot highlights with a really rich white we have it coming all the way down to the belts top of this little metal belt buckle anything that's more highly reflective we pick up that color more uh, top of the hand here again glaze and then a little bit of an edge highlight with the thicker paint uh, we've hit the top of the shoulder kind of rolled it down the skin tone and then these bandages over the gold the gold has a natural highlight so glazing works really well you just want to make sure to take a little bit of white and bring it back up with a, a more solid pigment 
back here, gone in, edge highlight. You can see there's a mixture here that's more of a desaturated uh, mirror of my non-metallic. I've gone in and used that to, to bring up the colors, keeping my shadows more neutral. And then the bars that cross over that won't catch much direct light, get a little bit of that pink and then some yellow added in for our natural light. Uh, gone in and edge highlighted all of these little pyramid shapes, the spikes around the, uh, the staff because I am a glutton for punishment. Um, <clears throat> we did come back over here and address this shape. Um, looking at Menoff reference images, this is usually gold and then the color scheme that was sent to me which is uh, like a black and gray that you can kind of identify where placement is with those. Um, so the black cross of course but the Menoff uh, bubble here, Minoff colored bubble, and then gold for that trim, that ring. So now, oh, sorry, a little bit more OSL on the face here, catching the lip and the bottom of this eye, just to show that they're they're peeking out from under the shadow, and then these straps uh, coming in and glazing and mixing a few, a little bit more solid on the colors, just hitting the peaks of the cloth, keeping in mind that the color is kind of obscured directly under that natural shadow that's being cast is kind of a good guideline for where to place those colors. And same over here, a little bit more intense since the lantern's resting right against the staff. So that is my thought process on those areas. Hopefully that is not um, the rest of the owl and that, that that is easy to follow for you guys. And if not, again, comment, ask questions. Um, now, our black crosses we are going to mix up i did a little bit of yellow with my blue to green it up just a little bit and then added white and black a lot of black uh, to bring that color down desaturate and that's going to be the highlight for our crosses so it's, it's very muted in some of the imagery i see a very almost blue green um, but most of them is a a light light highlight you're not going very bright with these. So what I'm doing is the Minoth have that nice peak shape. And I am concentrating on keeping that, the highlight area. For our shapes. And I stopped talking when I, uh, let's do this big shape on the back so you guys can see. So this is flat, but... I don't think it's supposed to be gold or anything. Now I'm questioning myself. So I'm just going to put kind of a, a nice broad band of color through the middle and then we can do a peak and a little bit at the bottom. Just to highlight up this middle section. Concentrating on our edges. edges kind of help you blend out spaces too so instead of having that that hard line that stops it's like you bring it up to the edge and then roll it down the uh, the side of the shape with your edge highlight and I'm a little bit in rush mode because this one's due today well, sometimes uh with projects, best laid plans, get them out. But there's more iterations on the sculpting side. And I try and be amenable and get this stuff knocked out for the those gracious people at Privateer Press. So I'm wondering if anybody that's watching these is is playing Mark IV. Or if I saw any of guys at Warfare Weekend, I was out there teaching classes, meeting new people. Everybody was super nice. It was a fun event. We ended up taking uh, Best in Show for the painting competition, which was a pleasant surprise. There are some really fantastic entries there. And I thought they were going to 
trounce me. I guess we're we're always our own worst critic when it comes to painting. Go a little bit brighter. This is probably about as bright as it's gonna go. Make sure we're hitting edges that would be getting caught by light. And I'm working fast. Uh, this is the recipe we'll go about up that high. It's a middle gray for your peak peak highlights. And then we'll go back and we'll look at weathering when I'm done with that. Let's do some basing before we move on to weathering just to get that part going. I like to go a little bit wetter with my earth brown so it will seep into the texture just a little bit easier. I hate painting sand. I should have done this probably first. It's not sand, it's the um, Tamiya basing texture. So it's a, it's it's finer than sand would be. It's uh where is the stuff? Ugh, it's this stuff. It's kind of hard to put on. Like if you wet your brush and get the um, the pigment like super wet, it will. Um, It'll lay down easier because it's, it's kind of like just to stick to your brush or your tools more than it likes to stick to the base. So I add a, a healthy amount of water to it. And that way we alleviate sitting there and trying to put it down and it just all comes right back off. Also, it, once you use it, like rinse out your water because the micro beads in this stuff are ridiculous they are tiny 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 and they get into everything they will destroy brushes and they will get in your paint they will get on your model you'll just have little stupid micro beads all over the place I gotta keep this area down near his cloak Kind of dark, so I'm gonna add a little bit of black while it's wet. Kind of wet, blend in a darker base tone back to the black shadow under his his skirt here. There's not a lot of light to get down in there. God, it's hard to see back in there. The reason I'm doing this first too is because I want to I want to make sure we can add a wash in a minute. And then let that dry, do, do some more weathering, and then come back, finish out the base, and be done. Paint around the staff and not get any dirt on my gold. Alright, almost done. No more comments. Alright, new color time. Jaded from Cuttlefish. So this is Creature Caster's um, line of paints. They are a glazing type of paint. Um, you can see here I've already added in some of the jaded as a verdigris on our gold. So we got a little bit here in the shadows. Very nice complement to all the other colors that we have going on. Um, some of the technical things about this paint that you guys might want to know. Um, it is not geared as a coverage paint. You can see here that it glazes on very thin. It's kind of at that consistency that pre-consistency to to glaze and it's not for coverage the other thing that's nice about it is it has a very gel like feel to it so it does move along the surface nicely you can see here adding like a few drips on that helmet maybe you can't see here <clears throat> let's see if I can get my light a little bit higher than the object so we're going to add some in under here. And you see how it 
it just kind of tones and works with the colors that are already there that's really what you want with these so great for weathering great for undercoats I know I've been liking it. I've been working on a few projects with it. I have one that has some really strong undertones. And this, these paints just go into town with them and putting them through their paces. And being pleasantly surprised. I don't think I would recommend this for a just getting into it. Like, don't, don't get this paint set for... Uh, somebody who's just getting into painting miniatures. Uh, this is a definite second paint set for people who have learned washes, dry brushes, and they feel pretty content with those techniques and they're wanting to move into things like glazing because it kind of takes the uh, the work out of it when it comes to brush load and consistency or that's the two biggest problems for people when it comes to glazing mediums but just going in and adding that verdigris jade is perfect color to stay kind of dark and moody well I'm gonna go all the way up to like a verdigris a mint mint color getting his nuts nice and dirty or is that? That's a screw. Could be a nut. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go in, pick a few locations, not try to like super, super overdo it, but just give them some character. All right, time to slather on some of this uh, Agrax. And as far as weathering, you see I've gone in and added some nice little green tones to the uh, the gold here just to give it some age. Uh, and then we're going to we add a little bit of dirt to the bottom of the tabards but let's get that earth shade running first slather it in there using all that good texture on the base to our benefit Always go heavy with those washes. Getting all the way back to the back here. Kind of hard to see. Again, he's, he covers up a lot of stuff. Uh, we'll clean up all the rest of this uh, brown before we finish out. But for the bases, we already have an earth tone here on our palette. Just slyly added some water here to thin it down again glaze consistency pull it out of the brush you could use one of those uh, cuttlefish colors too if you want to add a little bit of brown into this symbol and just pull it along the bottom of this tabard maybe you got too close to the ground got some dirt on him and on the back here, we had a lighter tan moving up the cloak. Ooh, too bright, too bright. Take my magic thumb. Take that off. That's too bright. Let's go back to our hemp. Well, that'll be one way to add it. Yeah, it's much brighter in tone. So, hemp here on the back. Going to reinforce in some areas that got overhandled a little bit, rubbed on the back. Take out those black showing through. Give a little brush lick and then blend it. I 
I'm gonna add a little bit in here, sort of haphazardly. Just to weather it, break it up. Got a little dirty. Yeah, no way it's not. It's not perfect, it's not meant to be. Add some happy little dirt. Alright, we're gonna add a little bit of rust to our steel areas. I think it would look nice up in here and in some of these cracks. So I have two colors that I just put away because I'm thinking about filming them. Uh, red, oxide, and orange. Um, two great colors for rust when watered down. Do like a little bit of mixture of both and then maybe pop some orange here and there. Other areas. So I put it on thin, not like almost like a wash. Let's see, anywhere that I think that stuff might build up, get a little rusty. Use that magic finger blend. Just so this area isn't like super perfect, right? See how I'm putting it on kind of wet. And letting it flow into the cracks. nothing else really steel around here. I'm not going to mess with the lighting but I will mess with some stuff up here. Just letting it get in there where water might pool on stuff. I'm going to stab somebody and give them some tetanus. Mr. Pokey. Dig some on the top. Some of these areas where the rain collects. You can see this guy kind of rattling around on the battlefield. Probably doesn't smell very good. Of course, trying not to over overdo it. Just some extra little accents there on my metal. Got a few reach around the front here, so we'll be able to see it. All right, now dry brush time. What do I want to dry brush with? Look, I'll break some of you guys' heart. I got like a size four. Series 7 for dry, dry brushing. It's old. Had a good time. Used to paint eyeballs with this brush, if you can believe that. Start heavy toward the front. Then wipe the brush off as I get toward the back a little bit. Just to blend things out. We're going to need to put some tufts on there. Some little ones. Don't want to block them all. Might tone that back just a little bit with some brown. There we go. 
I always go back and dry brush over if you get too bright with like a darker color it'll tone the tops again mix it there you go so we got kind of a lighter C shape it runs along the outside edge to kind of pull in and frame the model a little bit more plus his cloak does that a good bit cool let's pick out some grass found some it only took me a half hour no, nah, it didn't take long. Anyway, uh, green meadow set from Gamer's Grass. Really like these things, but I'm going to trim them. Got some scissors. Uh, I'm going to pick a tough and I'm going to knock it down so it doesn't obscure any of the model. And I'm not going to do that on video because that is over my palette and I don't want it in my paint. Giving my grass a haircut. Stop my camera from wobbling. So I do that, like come in from different angles with the, um, the scissors just so you don't get this weird sort of like one shape fuzz thing uh, add some glue I have tweezers I should use those Got some handy dandy little tweezers Ooh. I'm gonna stick it down in here in between his legs push Rough it up. There, right there, right in the middle. Oh, it's about a green. There's still some, uh, some sort of life on this battlefield. Alright, so while that's drying, I'm gonna take like a little bit of an older brush. Get some tan, a little bit of yellow. Not that much brown, a little bit of brown. Sort of hit the tops. Just to take the saturation of that green a little bit down. And my glue's still drying. But that's okay. Take some earth shade. It's still gonna dry. <clears throat> And I'm going to hit around the base of the grass. See how that blends it in? Gives it a little bit of a drop shadow. And you can poke it around on the top too, just to show that the... Someone might have stepped on it right there. Don't lick your brush. I'm trying to thin it down so I could blend out that shadow a little bit. And there we go. Got a little bit of dirty grass. Got a little bit of a dirty guy. Where's my Chimera Black? Here it be. It almost empty. So if anybody from Chimera is watching, they want to send me some more because they're expensive. Shipping rough. All right, black, gonna black out the base and just talk to you guys for a little bit while I'm doing so. I'll say this is a, a fun model to paint, very characterful sculpt. Breaks the frame of the base. And I hope you guys got a lot out of this. I was filming fairly quick. I started last Wednesdays, Friday and Saturdays. Kind of busy days for us at the shop. Taking care of people. Picking out paints, answering questions. But I wanted to make sure I provided some value. Teach you guys stuff. I'm always open to suggestions. If you got questions or comments. Please let me know. I'll do my best to uh, to answer those and make these videos better. Right now, I'm just using my cell phone. If you made it this far, you probably don't care. I'm just here for the 
information. But that is a finished model. I'm going to take some uh, hero pictures of him later tonight. Actually, this afternoon, in an hour or so. Um, he's got his nice broad cloak. With that lit up lantern. Went through two pallets. This is just him today. So a lot of a lot of color work. That nice OSL. But as always, happy painting. <laughs>